Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast. I'm Ramon Mia, here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and of course author interviews. This week I have six new reviews for your folks at home, and that's going to include reviews for uh, Challenge of a Scribe, a Lit RPG duology, book number two, Heavy, The Weight of It All, a Lit RPG fantasy adventure, also Wrong Divinity, Oh, f- Hate Spiders, <laughs> Arachnomancer, book number one. Um, then there's also Path of, of Path of Spirit, Escardium. Is it? Yeah, there's Escardium, book number six, uh, and then also Level Up, only by eating. So we have all those books for your folks to review this week for you. Uh, before we get into that, though, we're going to go into some lit RPG news. <laughs> And in Little PG News, we're going to start off with a wonderfully, wonderful story about Felicia Day, who's the narrator for the Little PG story Rule of Cool, the audiobook. Um, she ho- recently hosted a Q&A with several Little PG authors, including Carrie Summers, Andrew Rowe, Matthew C., and Ryan Rimmel uh, on her Twitch channel. So we'll link in the channels for so you can check out that video. Uh, it's about an hour long, um, and she goes over what their works are, what got them into Little PG, what Little PG means to them. Uh, and, and it's kind of a basic kind of genre quick Q&A stuff, so go check it out. Um, and other little bit of news, we have just a small message from Rex Crow, uh, the author of Gun Rod the Barbarian. He asked us to let readers know that he's updated the Kindle file, uh, Kindle file cover for what was formerly Gun Rod the Barbarian and is now called Realm of the Tower. Um, it... He, the author made a conscious decision to change the title because he felt that Gun and Rod were um, being suppressed as a title by Amazon. Um, and so he changed it to Realm of the Tower. Um, and uh, he also deleted the first chapter in the, in the form of book um, because he, he was responding to reader feedback that it wasn't working for the story and he deleted it. So there you go. So if you read our, if you already read Gun of the Barbarian, um, it's the same story. So don't think that Realm of the Tower is like the second book in the series or that it's a new series. It is, it always been published. It's just getting a different title treatment for um, all the author's reasons. Okay. In other little bit of news, we also have Michael Scott Earl. Um, he's just re-released Lion's Quest, book number one, on his website in ebook forms and audiobook form. Um, he's actually had the first book in the audiobook re-recorded. Um, there are uh, technical issues with um, Audible having the rights for it for a very long time um, and him not being able to publish it um, because of contractual issues. Um, and it's best spring release, I'm assuming. And so he's, he's putting up on his on web, own website um, with some products so you can go check it out and go grab it. And so go enjoy it if, you, if you're looking for that. And apparently he's also going to be re-releasing the audiobooks for book two and three with the new narrator, of course, re-recorded. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's actually one of the best celebrity series uh, in the genre. Um, the books have consistently got like nine editions for me, um, which is an amazing release comic, near perfect uh, for some of the books there. So definitely go check those out. Okay. Uh, and the last bit of Liberty news, we're a bit of a scam alert here. Um, if you're an author in the genre or author in general, if you have your, your, your book out there, you might want to go to uh, ACX, um, which is the platform used by Audible to, to upload audiobooks and to connect um, authors with narrators to do audiobooks um, because there's a new scam where thieves are, are claiming the audiobook rights for popular ebooks um, and uploading terrible audiobooks um, or even uh, books that are just read by a computer voice and then selling them on using the author's name. Uh, alternatively, they're also um, trying to scam legitimate narrators into working for them for free or for copay or for um, royalty split, uh, claiming to be either the author or a, a, an agent of the author when they don't have the rights. Um, a few of our little bit authors or genre, uh, genre people have had this happen to them. Um, both little bit producers, Spectrum Audiobook and Dante King have reported this happening to them firsthand. Uh, so we know it's really a thing. If you look for a, a, a more general search, um, you can find out it's happening in, in other genres as well. But for you folks who are, are, are 
uh, or Little Beach authors or Little Beach stuff that's published. It's a real simple process of signing up for ACX. If you already have an Amazon account, most information already transfers over if you're using the same username and login. Um, and even if you don't plan to actually publish an audiobook, you probably want to claim th- your audiobook for your account uh, in case you ever change your mind because you definitely want something else. Uh, the, the process of claiming something is literally just typing in the search engine, looking that book, clicking claim, and that's it. It's not, there's not really much verification happening, unfortunately. Um, and so definitely if you're an author, go do that just to be on the safe side of like claiming your audiobook rights, even if you don't plan to again actually do an audiobook. Okay, on to stuff that is out now, stuff that's come out recently. I haven't had a chance to read it, but it's out free to enjoy, including Snake's Rise, uh, which is the third book in the Snake's Life series, the third book in the Hapless Dungeon Fairy series, um, The Good Guys book number 10, which is doing amazingly well, is out free to enjoy. Player Reaches a Dot book number five is out. Pangea Online book number three as well. Um, a new series called Beginner's Quest, the Little Bitty Cultivation series, Towers and Rifts is out. Uh, the third book in the Legacy System series called Shamanic Rites is out, as is a new series called GES, Genetically Engineered Super Soldier, The Phoenix Project, book number one. Um, the third book in the Ether's Revival by the amazing Daniel Schienhofen is out for you to enjoy. Also a new series called Avarice Online, Caliban Red Hand. Uh, the fifth book in the Weaponized series is out from Victor Deckard. The... Um, highly anticipated for first fans. Um, Underverse book number four, Titan. Um, is out for, for you to enjoy. Uh, a new series called Dimming Org Prison Lab is out, um, as is the second book in the Great Game series called uh, Gentleman's War, A Tower Defense. And the fifth book in the Sky Realms Online series is out as well, as is Newtown book number five, a fan favorite. Um, also out is Elemental Alpha, which is doing pretty, pretty well. Um, so over 60 review positive reviews. It's called an Illustrated Little Bitty Military Fantasy Adventure Non-Standard Progression, book number one. Um, and also out is Growth Hero. So all those things are out. We verify that they're Little Bitty so you can go enjoy them. And and it's a shame that I have to do this because I'm just searching through Amazon for the podcast today. I was like, oh, there's a lot of scammy stuff out there. Just stuff that's literally ripped from online like and just published whether it's from the romance section or from Wuxia cultivation um just like cover arts that are just generic and copied and they're literally ripping off stuff so it's hard to differentiate uh actual liturgy from from scammy stuff it's it's a, it's a terrible situation um in new liturgy audiobooks we have some really good things here including real-time star commander a strategy gamelet novel i actually really enjoy this isn't technically liturgy it is gamelet and that it's doing um real-time strategy um in space um not quite 4x um it's just using resource management to build ships and a limited number of ships to do scenarios in the first book anyways still enjoyable if you like space space opera she stuff not quite a space opera but still set in space combat and some resource management stuff so a little more on the gamelet side but i like i like the ebook version of it um everybody loves large chess volume five uh, Teresa is out for the folks who are fans of that series. Also, Enemy of the World, uh, which is a, a foreign translation. I think it's Korean. It's a Korean translation of a story, um, and it's here. I think the ebook came out in 2017, um, and here's the audiobook finally read by Nick Podell. Um, also out is Tree of Ascension, Peril's Prodigy, book number two. Uh, Dungeons and Deal Holes, a Glitch World original story, which is a comedy uh, adult comedy, Little Bitty Story, um, is out for you to enjoy. Also, the th- fourth book in the Eternal Journey series is out. Um, uh, Afterlife box set, which has books one through three in there, is out if you want something that's a little bit longer. I think it's um, clocking in at over 25 hours uh, for a single credit. So if you like that series or you're interested in it, might be a time to check it out. You're also going to get a qu- complete series from Gold Girls and Glory, um, which is... Um, fantasy RPG harem. Um, I read book number one, enjoyable. Um, didn't like, I mean, it was fine. It wasn't like amazing for me because I'm not really in the harem stuff. Um, but as far as the RPG side, fairly entertaining. And a lot of people really enjoyed it. Um, also out is core control book number two, nomad control. So there we go. And the fifth book in the light online series is out as an audiobook as well. And a new series from Ember Lane for, for audiobook anyways. Uh, Wizards of Quince. There you go. 
and uh, Z-Locked, an OVR rule book online, is out as well as an audiobook. So all kinds of stuff for you. In upcoming Little G, this is where I read a bunch of stuff that's coming out in the near future, a couple months ahead. Um, but it's a nice way to plan your purchasing schedule if you're on limited funds, um, or if you're an author, planning out your publishing schedule so you're not competing with a bunch of other people on the exact same day. Um, here we go. March, March 7th is going to be Dungeons of the Old Gods. On March 8th, Sands of Blood and Stone, uh, Defying Divinity Direct Number 2. March the 8th is going to be the second book, I think, in the Dungeon Air, The Weight of It All series. We're reviewing book number one uh, this week on the podcast. Uh, also, out on March the 9th is going to be Tower Climber, book number two by Jacob Tanner. Um, March 9th is going to be He Who Fights at Monsters. Also, on March 9th is going to be Battle for the North Rogue Merchant, book number four. On March the 10th, the second book in the God Core series, Exodus of Gnomes, which is a gnome-based um, kind of dungeon core story. Um, on March the 10th is the third book in the Mephisto's Magic Online series called Ether Apocalypse. On March the 11th, the second book in the Apocosmos series, Magus. You might remember book number one having a uh, barbarian-looking guy with a corky in it. So there you go. On March the 16th is the third book in the Overdrive series. On March the 19th is Lucky Slots. March the 19th as well as the seventh book in the Reality Bender series, Cause of War. This is one of my favorite sci-fi literary series. It's a Russian translation as well. Um, on March the 24th is going to be Ravenous, a zombie apocalypse story from David Pietri, who's um, the author of uh, Party Heart, I think it is, um, which is a gamelet novel. Um, from um, Mountain Depress. On March the 30th is also going to be The Completionist Chronicles, book number six, In Flame, which is a super popular um, story from uh, Dakota Kraut. On March the 31st, it is going to be The Call of the Coven, Shadow Kingdoms, book number two. March the 31st, the fourth book in the Bow Knight series. March 31st is The God Games, book uh, volume number five. March 31st, as well as The Divine Apostasy, book number four. April the 1st is going to be Rise to Omniscience, book number nine. On April the 2nd, Nullifier, book number two. April the 2nd is going to be Dungeon Crawler Carl, book number three. Just finishing up book number two. I should have a review ready for um, next week's show. Uh, but book number three will be out on April the 2nd. April the 5th is going to be Null Form, book number one. April the 12th will be In the System, book number two. April the 12th will be Alpha Realm, book number one. April the 15th, The Good Guys, book number 11. So book number 10 just came out and 11 will be out in April. April the 20th, Rogue Merchant, book number five. April 22nd, Ash, The Legends of the Nameless World, April 30th, uh, The Guild Core, book number three. New to the list as well as May the 1st, Awaken Online, Hell yeah, by uh, Travis Bagwell. So that's a, that'll be a big story for the Awaken Online fans. On May 4th, Towers and Rifts, book number two. Uh, May the 4th, it'll be The Heavenly Throne, book number five. May 4th, uh, Manufacturing Magic, Jeff, the Game Master, book number one. May the 10th, Guns of Kaldora, which is the fourth book in the Factory of God series. May the 10th is going to be Project Stiller, book number four. Uh, May the 11th, Beta Testers, book number six. May the 12th is going to be Underdog, book number six, uh, another Russian translation story. May the 14th, The Range, book number two. May the 18th, He Who Fights with Monsters, two. So uh, book number one's coming out soon, and they already have book number two scheduled. On May the 18th, the Discardium, book number seven. Again, we're re reviewing book number six this week on the show, even though it came out a couple weeks ago. Um, on May the 20th, an NPC's Path, book number four. May 21st, uh, the third book in the real lit RPG Roman series, Punic Wars, book number three. On uh, May 25th, the Sleepless Ones, book number six. On May 31st, the Dungeon Slayers, book number three. June 29th, last on the list, is Primacy Online, book number six. So all kinds of stuff for you guys to enjoy in the new future. Uh, but now we're going to go on to new releases and reviews. And first up this week is going to be Challenges of a Scribe, a little bit of duality, book number two, written by Michael Dehoun. It is 190 pages, $5.99. It's available on Kindle Unlimited. Here's the author's description. 
The destruction of Edward's hometown forces him and his family to flee and confront the difficulty of rebuilding their lives. On their travels, Edward works to overcome the challenges of reintegrating with his siblings and parents. They try to work together in search of a brighter future, all, all feel the strain of losing their home and livelihood. Edward's not the same boy as when he left home and must balance uh, and must balance his hard-fought independence with his role as brother and son. Despite optimism for the future and escaping the destruction of Azalon, a dark threat looms over the family's hope of rebuilding. Edward's skills continue to progress, but will it be enough to protect the family's fragile beginnings? Overcoming his own fears and personal demons is the biggest challenge Edward must face as he chooses a future with his family or one of an adventure. So there we go. Um, I I really liked book number one in the series. I thought it was absolutely great. Um, it was smart, well-paced, had characters I loved, and there was well-earned RPG power regression in that series, in that first book. So I really looked forward to reading book number two. Um, and while I enjoyed the start of the story, it had good pacing, a good world development, and I, ex- I expected that continue throughout the novel, and unfortunately, it just didn't. Um, it wasn't that the writing got terrible, it was that the pacing seemed like it started to get rushed. Um, the story itself felt like it wanted to get through an outline quickly. Essentially, it felt like the author had plans for three, four, five books, or whatever, right? Um, and... Unfortunately, it felt like they were all kind of squished in here at once uh, for this one particular story. And it just didn't work because it, it everything felt rushed. The progression felt like it didn't matter anymore. Um, and it, it just, it's just the pacing and the good world development that I, I enjoyed just kind of stopped um, happening. The pacing was just so fast. It was hard for me to enjoy. Um the again the there are little individual jumps for adventure there are level jumping where the main character kind of lucks into like these big giant power jumps which is a, a deal for me um and then and and the the adventures don't really seem to have a point so much there's things that the main character does until the story ends and then just kind of ends abruptly and it just it just didn't feel well put together compared to book one. Um, if it was just on its own as a standalone novel, I probably wouldn't have had big of an issue, I guess. But because I'm also comparing it to something I really thought was great, this one just kind of fell on its side. Um, on the RPG side of things, were frustrating as well. The scrap aspect, um, which I thought was really fun and original in book number one, kind of disappears. In book number one, the main character uses hard work to unravel like the fundamental properties of, of, of other spells and combine them for his own originality. Um, and that, that, that disappears entirely. There's still levels up. There's still fighting and adventuring and there's the gaining of magical gear, which, which else the main character grew up more powerful, but most of the fights end up relying on the same spells again and again and again, stop, slow, bolt repetitively, uh, to win with a very few instances of the main character using intelligent, planning and uh, intelligent use of his abilities. Um, towards the end of the story, even, even that progression for Rush, the main character, again, having these major powered level dumps, like five to 10 at a time, um, it's in a world where leveling is supposed to be super duper hard. Um, and, and even those things were more like somewhere like, oh, I had, I had a major beast and I got these major levels up because of this thing that I did and on to the next adventure. And it just felt less satisfying compared to like the very careful plotted out and meaningful growth in, in book number one in the series. Um, additionally, I should note just for the people who have issues with this, there are some very semi-regular grammar and spelling issues, things that like spell check's not going to catch, um, like fo- food instead of wood, was, was, like repeating of words, little spiny things, small things like that. Um, it didn't bother me personally, but I know there's some people who that's going to drive crazy, so I'm mentioning it for you. Um, overall, I still enjoy the book. Like I like the author's writing. I I really liked the world building and the character development um, when it was there. Um, like the 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 beginning really set up a tone of like, oh, this is going to be great, just like Brick Number One is. And for the first little bit, like twenty percent, twenty five percent, it really really was. It continued on all the things I really enjoyed. There was a good sense of tension, good world building, good good, good development of of, of uh, interpersonal relationships between him and his family. Um, but once the main character got like to the to to a certain point, like twenty five percent in, um, things just started getting rushed, and it really dropped down my enjoyment. It really did feel like 
all these little adventures were meant to be stretched out over three or four books, but they were kind of squished and summarized into a single book. Um, and it really knocked down my enjoyment. And I still liked it overall again, though. Um, just getting a, a much lower review score. Um, it's going to be a 7.1 out of two, seven point two rather out of 10, um, which means I still liked it. I still overall had a good time, but I don't regret getting it. Um, but I, you know, I, I, it was very much, it was very close to like, oh, me not enjoying it. If it wasn't for that good beginning where it really connected me back to the good storytelling of book number one, or that I didn't have as, as good uh, a, a, a mindset from just enjoying Breaking Moment so much going to Breaking Two, I, I might not have gotten a good, as good of a score. Uh, for me, though, it's still enjoyable, 7.2 to 10. Challenge of a scribe, a literary duology, book number two. Okay, on to the next review, which is Heavy, The Weight of It All, a Liberty's Fantasy Adventure written by J.J. Thorne. It is 308 pages. It is $2.99. It's available on Kindle Unlimited. And here's the author's description. An affinity. Most humans never get one, but the goddess gives everyone the opportunity when they turn 16. With an affinity, humans are given access to their internal energy and skills, magical powers that allow you to interact with the world in ways you could never imagine. When Terence receives his affinity, he is shocked to discover it has never been seen before within the kingdom. Worse yet, his affinity reinforces the thing that he was made fun of for his entire life, his weight. Apollo Terrence has used his affinity to progress with hopes of becoming a dungeoneer, someone who explores and conquers dungeons. So there we go. Um, this is a YA magical academy story that uses RPG progression. Um, there are a couple side stories with a different main character set up to set up the storylines. Um, but for the most part, you just follow the main character as he learns he's one of the funeral village to get a special power. He learns about the power, which is to weigh objects or to find, figure out what their weight is. And you see him train both at home in the village and also in his um, magical academy he eventually goes to. Um, there are a few small action scenes, but the majority of the story is a very slice of life following the main character as he goes to this magical academy, doing mandatory training, interacting with other classmates, having some small... Um, personality conflicts. Um, and there is a bit of world building, RPG setting up the RPG rules and etc. Um, but that's kind of it. There's not a lot of progression, even in the core concept of the main character um, doing going into dungeons. That doesn't really pan out. The main character doesn't actually rank up. He, he starts off with rank one and he, his, 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 the progression percentage wise of, of his power increasing gradually goes up during the story. Um, so there's a, like a slight bit of RPG progression, but it doesn't actually hit rank two, which is when he gets his new powers. Um, and nobody in the story, nobody, none of the main characters, nobody in the school gets that ranking up. There is one rank up example, which I think was inserted just to kind of show that it does exist in this world, uh, with a side story with a different character. Um, but, but for the main character, there really isn't a ton of like real RPG progression because it isn't, he's not really getting new powers. He's literally just like hardcore grinding his, his, his power by weighing everything, every person, every object, everything. And he's kind of stretching it a little bit in, 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 in training up his, uh, mana, internal mana. I'm calling it mana. He calls something else in the book. Um, but that's kind of it. So for me, it wasn't bad. It just wasn't a lot of like real progression either in the storyline or in the RPG progression, um, just kind of a setup for potentially things in the future. And on the whole, it felt like a serial story that ended like before something happens. Um, hopefully book two would be better. I don't know. It's coming out pretty soon. Um, but for me, it just kind of skates the level of enjoyment. Um, it, it just, it was really straight on line between doesn't work for me six out of ten and okay this is kind of good seven seven something um and in the end i, I kind of basically very i i fundamentally enjoyed it overall um i don't regret getting it so i'm like okay i guess i liked it enough so get to give it a 7.1 out of 10 but it was kind of one of those stories like if you don't like slice of life if you need rpg progression if you need action this might not really do it for you for me i'm okay with slice of life i'm okay with like really just like following a story and and see where the main character goes um, as long as it's, you know, semi entertaining for some kind of progression or out of the box thinking or training, whatever. And I think the, the, the regular training and hard work to make character was just enough to be entertaining for me. And if that hadn't existed, it I wouldn't have worked at all for me. Uh, so gets a, a barely a good score of 7.1 out of 10. That's heavy. The weight of it all with a score of 7.1 out of 10. And next up is 
Wrong Divinity. Oh, sh- sh- I hate spiders. Uh, Arachnomancer book number one. Those little pauses are actually in the title hooks. Um, written by Dustin Tigner. It is 347 pages, $4.99. It's available on Kindle Unlimited. And here's the author's description. Dane kicked the bucket in spectacular fashion. Every bone crushed, every organ popped against the full force of a 40-ton garbage truck speeding through a red light. The only part of an intact hole entirely unaffected by the grisly affair was his soul. Souls are durable things, you see, like kids. They bounce. And bounce he did into the abyss between worlds, drifting until one excited soul watcher fished him out and found him a new home, a heavens for gamers and nerds of everything in between. It was all he could have ever wanted in the afterlife, down to choosing his class, killing mobs, and exploring a beautiful fantasy world chock full of mysteries yet to be discovered. At least, it would have been those things if that first day had gone a little teeny bit differently. Instead, he now finds himself locked in the middle of an eternal conflict between light and shadow, humans and monsters, potentially being an enemy to all. Okay, um, this story fundamentally has a lot of humor, um, a lot of attempts at humor. And if it lands, you're probably like it just based on that. Um, but for me, it, it essentially is a miss because of, of some story inconsistencies, which I'll go into. Um, you could tell that the story has a lot of heart into it, and there's a certain charm again if the jokes and the humor land for you. If you read a sample of the story, um, which is like the first 10% of it, and none of the jokes really hit for you, it doesn't get better. <laughs> it's the same kind of sense of humor. Um, for me, I found some of the jokes funny and some was like, okay, that that's, I get that you're trying to be funny and I'll give you credit for it. Um, but there were other things that just made this a miss for me, mostly in the, in the issues of consistency with world building, um, subtly inter uh, unrealistic dialogue and interactions that you can tell were written just for a joke. Um, and where some RG, RPG stuff, good stuff. I'll start off with, um, there's a consistent sense of humor and good gamer jokes. Um, you see details about game mechanics. They're, they exist throughout the story. They're fairly regular. Um, there's a semi-regular action and some interesting class features. So good stuff there with the Arachnomancer stuff. Um, issues. There are a lot more of these for me. The main character kind of seems to magically know a bunch of stuff he hasn't really earned. It's supposed to be um, a, a semi-download of magical information about this world, but not always that's not 100 percent where he doesn't know everything he's just just enough in like world building and history of the world um and some background stuff or how things are supposed to work game mechanics uh but even then not all the time so that's kind of inconsistent and, for, and but even the places where he does supposed to know things and he's just spouting oh my mind tells me that i know this stuff uh, and it was just it, it kind of sucked for me because i always see those as opportunities to do exploration for him to do world building to do learning on his own to actually talk to and interact with people of this world to figure out the actual world history or or or, or fundamental rules or explore the or surrounding cities to actually get first hand knowledge and instead he's just kind of this info dump because he magically knows it and he hasn't earned this information though so it, it was it was a thing for me um dialogue was another issue for me especially on the monster side which is okay relatively brief portion of the story unfortunately um the dialogue with the monsters felt very modern these are all supposed to be creatures or people um that exist in this world and they didn't really fit in with kind of the world building that was set up um that monsters are all these entities that are meant to be killed or that they're that they're created by this um dark side faction um of gods um for to to go against the humans apparently everybody's reincarnated is is a human um on the light side or some other race uh, on the light side and the main character is the first person in like a super uber long time apparently um to or ever to to ever get a dark side power even though he's not actually a monster he's reincarnated as a human which feels weird um according to like the lord that that's given to me on, on the storytelling side of things so it didn't really make sense to me um the story starts with the main character being on the dark side with the monsters which again you know it is what it is it's, it's a premise it had a lot of potential um, except that the dark side isn't really explored. It's probably going to be explored in book number two or three, whatever the case is, as the main character grasps that faction. Um, but the introduction of it just didn't, again, didn't really make sense. And it, again, it had a ton of potential and that he has this dark side, he's supposed to be of the dark side faction going to the light side area for reasons. It doesn't ever really explain it other than, oh, he's, he's trying to go to the local, local village, even though he's supposed to be on the dark side 
on the on the you know dark faction side, helping them to survive and build dungeons or whatever the case is. Um, and it really just felt like a way to introduce an antagonist uh, organization and do some like small um, slice of life adventures. Um, but it didn't really make sense in my brain according to the rules that were given me. Instead, it just it's just kind of a thing he does, and he kind of accepts it. Otherwise, it, excuse me, the fundamental premise of the story kind of falls through for me. Um, but it's just that there were no real penalties for a lot of the story. The main character going in this world, he magically had the ability to kind of hide his, 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 his affiliation or his side, even though there are supposed to be functions of, of, you know, for people to show it, you know, what side they're on or what God they're associated with. Um, and once I, the main, I, it, this is just an example, like these, RPG mechanics or these new game rules that suddenly pop or these new storytelling issues that pop up for the sake of like, oh, this is interesting, but there's no setup for it. Uh, for example, at one point, the main character is arrested by, you know, lights at priestess. Um, and there's just like a lot of things like, oh, he apparently magically knows her, her real name, her, her true name, which gives them a sort of power over her. Um, only that's nothing that's ever set up in the story. It's kind of mentioned once here and like once briefly in passing later on in the story. And I feel like it was something that I thought was cool, potentially going to develop. It just never did in this story. Um, and there's a lot of things like that that kind of pop up in the story. That there's like these these moments or these like potentially cool things that pop up, whether it's like a, 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 a interaction with another character or an RPG mechanic specifically would bug me. Um, but it, it just felt like it was made up. On the, on the spot because oh this sounds cool or it's, it's a joke um and there was no refleshing out of it um or, or no setup for it so there's it felt like it was just kind of made up on the spot and and that always bugs me because it felt like there's even though author may have this totally plotted out it felt made up for me uh, as a reader um and in general character progression was another issue for me as well the main character does develop as as a personality character but it it, it it's not gradual. It's just one chapter. He's kind of this wimpy noob who's exploring things. And the next chapter, he's a high level badass uh, who's able to bluff others into thinking he's a king demanding his own release and winning a fight with conveniently undisclosed level opponents. Uh, and there's literally just like a, a tra- chapter by chapter side of like, and the author goes out of his way to explain why that happens. And I'm like, and the way he does it, I'm like, okay, I, I Yes, that can make sense, but it's kind of a stretch, and it's obviously a, 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 a an author set up to to power level this guy in in, in a single night. Um, it just, but it, for me, it just it felt um, it felt like a forced story element, and it, it definitely the RPG side thing. I felt like that shouldn't exist, at least without a lot not uh, without more RPG explanation of like the certain details, like how it happens. Um, and so for me, overall, the story misses because of the inconsistencies, the sa- seemingly made up um, story moments and some of the game mechanics. And again, there are good things about the story that I think a lot of people have really enjoyed. And, and a lot of other people like the story. Like I said, if the humor lands for you at all, that's probably going to be enough to to get you through the story and it, on an enjoyable level. Because there's, there's like I said, regular action. There's um, rel- there's like really good characters who are like being interesting. And I said some of the RPG stuff is consistent for most of it's inc- consistent rather. Um, but there are some interesting game mechanics as far as the class goes, the Erectomancer or the development between the light and dark. So I thought it was really nicely um, how it played out eventually was nice, even if it is kind of suddenly changed. Um, but for me, the other things kind of ruined the story for me, unfortunately, because I'm, and that's mostly because I, I'm big on the game mechanics. I'm really big on like understanding how the school would work and being consistent. Um, and that doesn't exist here, um, sometimes for me. So that's unfortunate, but for me, it gets score six out of 10. That's wrong divinity. Oh, sh- fl- spiders. Heat, <laughs> heat spiders, a rectomancer book number one. Uh, unfortunately with the score six out of 10, which means it doesn't work for me. But it might work for you. And next up, we have Path of Spirit Discordian, book number six, written by Dan Sergalanoff. It is 513 pages, $6.99. It's available on Kindle Limited. Here's the author's description. Sith and the followers of the Sleeping God have lost the Holy War. The new gods, who call themselves the True Gods, celebrate unaware of the sl- that the Sleepers have one more temple left. But how long until they find out? After all, cis enemy Mogwai, once the strongest player on the planet, knows about Karinza. 
The supreme legate of the destroying plague thirsts for vengeance and is eager to regain his former positions, becoming stronger every day, while Sif, deprived of his invulnerability, has lost his former advantages. At the same time, the citizenship tests are approaching and Cali Bottom turns out not to be quite so welcoming to the Awoken after all. Behemoth demands the impossible of Sith, and the one thing that can help the initial of the sleepers is the demonic games. That's a lot of stuff, um, and a lot of it is discussed here uh, in this story. Uh, now, full disclosure, I received advanced copy for review. I purchased a copy when it became available. Um, this series has always been fun for me. This one um, teeters on the edge of like, oh, stuff happens, but there's not a lot of plot development. Um, it, it, this is kind of an extension of an upcoming book, which is the seventh book in the series, uh, with a bunch of it's going on. Um, uh, essentially, the author writes in the back of his book, um, and he also kind of mentioned, messaged me uh, when I got the book from him, um, it, that this <laughs> was kind of a, originally planned to be one book, um, where, where, the, where the demon games happen, and that progression, but the events preceding the, the actual start of the means started becoming so interesting the author and playing out so well and just kind of extending out they kind of felt forced to cut into two separate books and i absolutely understand that um there are things that happen plot wise that are, are sort of a, a lot of it's set up for book number seven to be resolved in there um but there are like small little adventures as well that that have their own um um beginning middle and end so there's there's some progression for the most part the big plot lines kind of are set up and then they're planned to be <laughs> resolved in book number seven um there are some other points of progression including rpg regression um uh, which i liked including like the unarmed combat stuff which i thought was really neat um but other plot lines just kind of get started out and they're they're going to be finished later in book number seven so the progression was a lot slower here than there are in other books which have like fully formed beginning and like major plot line stories um overall i still like i like the writers uh, uh i like the author's writing i like the characters i like the world building um that still exists in this thing um but for folks who want immediate progression they might want to wait till book seven comes out and just read six and seven back to back uh, for me, I'm okay. Again, I'm okay with slice of life stuff, and I still like the the fights that occurred in the story. I like the other progression points. I like the interaction with the characters. So that was kind of enough to get me through. Um, not my favorite book in the series, however. Um, it gets a score of seven point five out of ten, which is um, a, a middle good review score for me uh, as far as these books go. Um, and hopefully, when book number seven, it'll, it'll connect those plot lines a little bit better together for me. But for now, that's Path of the Spirit, discarding book number six, with the score 7.5 out of 10. Okay, last review of the week is going to be Level Up Only by Eating. Um, this is 50 plus chapters. It is a main, it's an online webcomic or a manga. Um, free. It, there is no English license or publisher at this point in the, in, in the series. Um, if it does ever get an English publisher, we'll swap out the, the link in the show notes so that you guys get the official ones. But until now, the uh, um, I'll link to uh, fan translations of this particular story. Um, the novelist of uh, the comic description is as follows. The main character is stricken by a rare condition that affects only two people in the entire in the entire world. Bol Bolinia. Um, the or he organizes his daily meals to survive, but his hopes of survival grows dimmer as the day goes by. He consults a doctor who's just playing the alternative reality game Athenia, where he can eat as much as he wants without gaining any weight. He plays the games to save his life and grow in strength by doing nothing but eating a gourmet fantasy life. So the main character has this condition where he can't stop eating. He He's getting super big. And so that's kind of the setup of the story. He's going in this game role, virtual reality game, MMO. So that he can eat to his heart's content um, without actually gaining weight in real life, and so he's using this in connection with the R with the real life uh, strategy of like having this really meticulously calculated dietary plan and exercise routine, um, and so that that's the setup of the story to to save his life that way. Um, what ends up happening as far as the story goes is a slice of life adventure with the with the main character who just loves food in this game focusing on that instead of focusing on like the general MMO stuff like leveling up fighting monsters crafting whatever the case is he kind of goes into that tangential from a love of food and so all of his adventures are very food based cooking based um they progress um based upon 
his his desire to kill interesting animals and cook them up to eat them and to make delicious food. Um, and the story is very slice of life. There is some action and adventure occasionally, um, but it's mostly just the main character traveling around, seeing what he likes to eat, and kind of like just really just loving the realism of that aspect of this VR MMO game. Um, all the way to the point where he kind of becomes a little overpowered and it's kind of fun to see his adventure and his journey along the way. I really enjoy the story. It again, it's casual, fun, and the art makes it a good read. Um, gets a nice review score from me of 7.5 out of 10. I'll actually pull up uh, the links uh, just so you can see what this story looks like. Um, I'll pull up a chapter here so you guys can check it out. Okay, so this is a, a middle of the series chapters. You can see how the artwork actually ends up being, and you can see the artwork is actually fairly decent. Um, nice clean lines, clean colors, good background stuff, um, and and like you can see the line work and like good expressions conveying emotions in addition to like the, the dialogue itself. Um, so none of these are the main character, uh, so maybe a, a, <laughs> a bad chapter, but it is interesting enough to, to, to see what the, the actual artwork looks like. So you'll, you'll be able to see the stuff here. So there we go. Um, that's the artwork on this series. So there you go. Um, so the, for, again, uh, leveling up only by eating gets a nice review score for me for 7.5 out of 10. Nice, enjoyable, no, nothing like super amazing, but it's a real life, real good slice of life, enjoyable series. You can kind of follow chapter by chapter. And again, there's only, there's over 50 chapters at this point. So um, there's a little nice long chunk of reading stuff for you to enjoy on this particular op episode. Okay, that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That's the end of the show. I got all the reviews taken care of for you folks. Five reviews for you. Um, I want to thank you for listening, for watching. Remember, if you want to follow the podcast, get our reviews on a weekly basis, um, or just see the whole back catalog of th over the uh, thousands of, of reviews we've done for the Liturgy and the novel we've read and reviewed, you can follow us on Facebook.com um, at Liturgy Podcast, Twitter, YouTube, Patreon, our website at LiturgyPodcast.com. Liturgy we can see the entire back catalog of stuff we've done, all the reviews we've, we've done, including little tags and links so you can find stuff you like within that little subgenre of Liturgy. Um, you can also find us on the Spotify, Audible, and a bunch of other stuff. So there you go. Plenty of places to find and support us at. So again, um, thanks again for just hanging out with me for the week, letting me talk about the genre I love. And again, if you have comments, drop them in the show notes or in the YouTube comments or wherever you're finding this on the Facebook page, Twitter, wherever. I love hearing from you guys and, and getting comments back from you about the stuff that we both enjoy, hopefully, at Liturgy. But until we can hang out again, remember to go read some Liturgy. Goodbye, everybody.